This week's news has been pretty much dominated by one company, Apple. As right on cue, they took the wraps off the iPhone 6 and the gigantic iPhone 6 Plus live on stage at the Flint Center in San Francisco. The 4.7 inch iPhone 6 is just 6.8 millimeters thin, but the star of the show, however, has to be the eagerly awaited iPhone 6 Plus. The 7.1 millimeter thin phone packs in a vast 5.5 inch 1080p display, which Apple has tailored to its iOS software to fit making use of the extra screen space to show more text on screen, more icons and even a dual plane mode in landscape. Running a different keyboard, it's a halfway house between an iPhone and an iPad and looks like a real Samsung Galaxy S and Note competitor. Both devices are powered by Apple's new 64-bit A8 chip, so could run blazingly fast. And Apple claims you're looking at CPU improvements of up to 25% compared to last year's models. And that's all without a hitch on battery life either. In fact, the iPhone 6 Plus's large size provides a major step up in stamina, handling up to 12 hours of non-stop web browsing or 80 hours of audio, compared to the iPhone 6's 50. Both phones are also equipped with an 8 megapixel camera on the back, with a new sensor and rapid focusing, as well as panorama software to muster up 43 megapixel scenic vistas and 240 frames per second slow-mo video clips. On top of that, the iPhone 6 Plus packs in optical image stabilization, which the standard 6 doesn't have, for better low-light performance. And they will ship in black, gold and silver, with both models offering a 128GB option for the first time. But of course, that wasn't the only story from Apple, as the Apple Watch we've been waiting years for is finally official. It's a beautiful metal timepiece with six different straps and a surprisingly simple user interface that draws from, of all things, the classic iPod click wheel. Instead of going for complete touchscreen controls, Apple have put navigation into the dial on the side, letting you scroll up and down or zoom in and out with a twist. While the icons are similar to those found on iOS, the honeycomb cluster layout is anything but. It's a surprisingly old school touch and one we can't wait to try out. On top of that, the Apple Watch can detect force as well as touch, so it can differentiate between taps and presses to help you control apps. Around the back, there are four sensors to detect your heart rate, as well as the wireless charging kit to allow you to drop it on the charger and juice it up while you sleep. Perhaps the best of all though, the watch itself comes in two sizes, large and small, as well as three editions, Watch, Watch Sport and the 18 karat Gold Edition to cope with the vastly different wrist sizes we all have. But when the Apple Watch launches early next year, it'll start at $349. If Apple can deliver what it's promised, we might just be looking at the new king of the smartwatches. And finally, right before Apple revealed its latest smartphone to the world, Amazon announced that its 3D equipped Amazon Fire Phone is on the way to the UK, and it'll hit shelves later this month, exclusively on O2. The handset which rocks multiple front-facing cameras to track your face and offers a 3D depth effect was originally announced back in June and has since faced off stiff competition from smartphone heavyweights like Samsung and HTC in the months since. It does come packing plenty of skills though, including head tracking abilities to scroll through apps automatically while you read, and it runs on the company's own Fire OS 2, packing in features like Mayday, X-Ray and Second Screen. You'll also find a 13 megapixel main camera on the back, plus unlimited cloud storage for all your snaps and videos. If you fancy grabbing one, it's ready for pre-order on O2 Refresh and can be had for no money up front on a £33 tariff for the 32GB version and 2GB worth of data.